Lord, we surrender to you. We just come this evening, this afternoon to surrender to you as your children. You're a good father. You're a good father. You know, as I was praying, there's just a thought that came to me. And I sensed it was something from the Lord. You know, when I said it earlier, I said, it, I said this to my pastors at one point. I said, fathers give birth to sons. Sons call out fathers. God is a heavenly father. <laughs> He's really the father of every human being. But you know what John 1 12 says? It says, to those who received him, to those, he gave them the power to, to become what? Are you understanding? He had the right because he made them all, but there's something they had to do to call him out. And then they became sons. Is that dramatic? Is somebody just being struck by that revelation right now? It's like everybody should actually say, Father, you, you made me, surely. But he says, no, no, no. <laughs> I made you, but I become your father when you call me your father. That really is what we're learning this whole retreat. That there's a way that I have to connect to Father in heaven, but I also have to connect to a spiritual father. And when Paul calls Timothy his son, I don't believe he's forcing Timothy to be his son. I'm sure it's because Timothy at some point has said, this is my father. You see, I can never force you to be my son. I can make you, I can create a son, but that son becomes, he really, I become his father when he calls me daddy. Does that make sense to somebody here in this house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really sense that God is calling us to a place of committing ourselves to him. He's calling us to a place where we begin to just say, you are my father. By the way, when I, call, when I call God, it's not like he doesn't know. He, I may, he's the one who made me. But in my prayer now, I'm like, hi, daddy. <laughs> you know, Jesus, his first line, he says, our father, who is where? In heaven. Is it that God doesn't know? He, do, he knows who he is, but Jesus is calling him out. He's saying, you're my daddy. I'm claiming you as my father. I'm putting myself in your covenant. I am aligning myself in your house. I'm becoming a son of this house. You are my father. I want us to just take a moment right now. As you're saying, I give you all of me. Just take a moment right now and call out to your heavenly father. Say, Father, I'm here. I'm your child. <laughs> just speak to your father. Just open your mouth and speak to him. He's here. And he'll never force himself to be your father. You have to call it out. You have to say, I, I, I locate myself in your house. I surrender to you. Your will be done in my life. I am part of your family. I choose today out of my will to follow you 100%. I choose out of my will to give my life to you. Hey, nobody is forcing me to do this, Lord. I come out of my own volition. I come into the throne of grace. And I come because I want to be here, Lord. I'm not coming because I'm being forced. Lord, I'm opening my mouth right now. I'm saying, you're my father. You're my father. You're my daddy. I call you out, Lord. I'm saying I'm nothing without you. Lord, in you I live and I move and I have my being. Father, without you, I am nothing. Come on, somebody just speak to the Father right now. Just say, Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord. I surrender my life to you. I submit everything, all that I have, all that I am. I give you all of me, Lord. I give you all of me, Lord. I give you all of me, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. I give you all. Of me. Come on, someone sing it now. I give you all sing it with revelation me. now. Come on, speak to your father. I give you all of me. I give you, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. You are my father. I give you all of me. Everything I am is yours. I give you all of me. Father, we just come to say we're yours. What a great week this has been, Lord. Just one grace after another. One revelation after another. One blessing after another. 
And Lord, we know it's not done yet. You still have something for us. And so, Lord, we just come right now with expectant hearts. <laughs> we come with expectant hearts because we know you have something for us. You have something for us. As we read the book, Loyalty and Disloyalty, one of the things that Bishop Dag said is he said that there are different reasons that people become disloyal to vision. And he said one of them is independence. Independence. Any independent people in the house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, independence. Just being that person who knows everything. That person who has to check everything. That person who doesn't trust anything. That's, that's going to make you disloyal. He talked about the fact that pain makes people disloyal. Bitterness. Somebody hurt me. Somebody didn't check on me. Somebody didn't visit me. Somebody said some words to me. And so that pain can enter your heart and make you disloyal. And by the way, all those reasons he gave, they work in church, they work in the office, they work in your marriage. All those things, they can cause you to become a disloyal person. And I just sense that even now as we're singing, I give you all of me, that there are some of us in this space where you know, even as Apmo has been speaking this whole week, that oh my goodness, I have been in a space of serious disloyalty. I've served in a space of a servant, a slave. I've not served as a son or a daughter in the house where God has placed me. And for some of you, it's in your compass. Some of you, it's to this vision. But there's some of you, it's even, I suspect God has even challenged some people in their marriage this week. I don't know why I just sense that marriage thing. That I've just not honored my spouse, my husband, the way I should have. My spiritual authority, my leader. And I just sense that the Lord would have us come to a place where we move from words to actual action. And where we commit ourselves and say, Lord, I have been a rebel. I have been a disloyal person. But that disloyalty will never be part of my life again. That is my past. It will never be my future again. And if this is you, you just know that this is you. I'm going to ask you to do a bold thing right now. Maybe, and, and by the way, maybe the, 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 the pain has not even been resolved yet. <laughs> maybe that hurt. The person hasn't apologized. And maybe they might never. But you're saying, I will not let what was done to me keep me from what God has for me. Is anybody with me in the house? I will not let what was said to me keep me from what God wants for me. I will honor as unto the Lord. And this is you. And what I want to ask you to do, if this is you, I'm going to ask you to actually just come to the front, right over here, and actually kneel over here. This is just your space. You're coming before your father. And you're saying, Father, I come to repent. This is a place of repentance. And so just come. Come, come, come. We're going to sing that song again. I give you all of me as we do that. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. It's the Lord who convicted your heart. It's not an apostle. It's not a person. But you're saying before the Lord. I give you all of I've had a seed of disloyalty in my heart. I'm not doing this in front of a person. I give you all of me. This is before my heavenly Father. I give you all of me. I'm coming to confess my disloyalty. I give you all of me. I'm coming to end the curse of disloyalty in my life. I give you all of me. I'm breaking away from the past. I give you all of me. The limitations that have been in my life. giving my life completely, completely, completely to service. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey, by the way, if you're standing and this is you, you need to do this. This is not for a pastor. This is not for somebody. I just sense that there's some blessings God has for us that will only come as we end some of this stuff. If you know you've been there, maybe you, maybe even you something resolved a couple of days ago, but you haven't yet just come and said, hey, I confess. This is your public confession. And you know what? Confession is not something that is there to shame you. God says if you confess our sins to one another, we will be healed. And for some of us, there have been limitations. There have been cups in your life. There have been things that have not been happening in your life. And I sense that as you do this, God is going to start to bring some breakthroughs that you've been praying about for a long time. Some of you, by the way, it's your, it's your earthly father. You've been a dishonorable son your mother, you've been a dishonorable daughter, 
and you know that this has been you. It may not be words you say, but you know the attitude of your heart. You've not lived a life of honor. You've lived, you've tolerated them. And this is your space to just come and say, listen, I just choose. I choose to just come. <laughs> I'm coming and I'm putting myself down. Some of you have a friend you've even gossiped with. You've complained with. You're not seeing them kneeling. Go and get them. Tell them, let's go. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we've talked about in this church for a long time is a grapevine. There's, there's, a, there's been a, 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 what do you call it? Some of you know what I'm talking about. The Mavuno grapevine, where people just talk and talk about their supervisors, talk and talk about what has happened. We're saying that thing ends today. By the way, if you see somebody kneeling here, what they're saying is that that's not in my life anymore. It's over. It is over. Don't come and talk to me about things like those because I am loyal. I am that person. Come on, if this is you, just come, 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 come. Stop hesitating. Are you embarrassed? Who are you embarrassed about? If you cannot be here, if you cannot come here, will you go in front of your congregation? This is a space. This is a space where God would have us just come and confess. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Just speak to your father. This is your father. This is why you call out your father. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive my disloyalty. Forgive those thoughts that I've had. Forgive those conversations I've had. Father God, I'm turning over into a new space. Forgive my independence. My sensing that I have to do everything my way. It has to be my way. I've not lived a surrendered life. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Father God, I want to thank you for every prayer that's going up to you right now. I thank you that, Lord, you are that God who does not treat us like our sins deserve. You're such a loving God. You're such a loving Father. And that, Lord, you forgive. Father, you forgive. When we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. And so listen, for those of you who are kneeling right now and having your business with your father, I want to speak on his behalf over your life. And I want to say these words to you. Listen to me. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. The curse over your life is broken. Satan has no words over you anymore. There is no demon that can attach itself. There's no demon that will attach itself to your life anymore. There is nothing that will limit your life because of rebellion. Anything that has been attached to your life that is not of God, I disconnect from you right now in Jesus' name. And I speak over you right now that even where you have found yourself limited, where you found yourself frustrated, where you found yourself in a space where you've wondered why you're not moving forward, where you found yourself in stagnation, it is over in Jesus' name. And I speak over you right now. In fact, I want to just prophesy over you right now. I want to declare over you that in this next month, you will see signs in your life that will confirm this prayer. Just receive that word. It's your word. Things will happen in this month of August and September. <laughs> And you will testify that there are things that have happened that have never happened before in my life. Simply because this curse has been rolled away from your life. And so Father, I thank you. These are your daughters. These are your sons. You love them. And Lord, you don't force anyone to come into confession. It's them. Out of their own volition, they have come and said, I'm sorry. And Father, when we do that, you forgive us. And so right now, the reproach is rolled away completely. And I just speak new life new joy, new passion, new relationships. Amen. Amen. We want to pray. And here's what we want to do. Before we pray, I just want to make a couple of sort of just observations and then we'll pray. Um, yeah, it's a holy space. But you know holy spaces doesn't mean you have to act weird. Huh? Lighten up. Look at your neighbor. Just tell them, smile. God isn't a serious God like that. <laughs> There's joy in God's house. Amen? <laughs> there is. There is. And I, by the way, even before I, I go to what I was going to say, I just sense, I don't know why in my heart, there's somebody who's been so far from God, you've been practically backslidden. I don't know, I just feel like there's somebody here, you've just not even had a relationship with God. You've been doing the functions of Christianity 
but you've been backslidden. You've actually not, you know that right now you're not even connected with him. And maybe there's somebody even here who's not given your life. You know, you know right now you've not given your life to Jesus. You're in the house of God. Other people are being served. But you're, you're, you're just a servant in God's house. You're not a son of God. I, I don't know why. I, I don't even know why I would even make such a call in, a, in the middle of a staff retreat. But I just sense that's what God is asking me to do right now. And I sense the reason he's asking me to do that is because he loves you too much to leave you behind. He doesn't want you to just watch people with joy and you not have experience of it. He doesn't want new life to be in other people around you, your family members, others around you, and you yourself have not experienced what that is. Or maybe you've walked away from it. And you know what? It would be my joy and my privilege as your father to lead you back to your Lord. So if you're here, I'm going to ask you to do a very bold thing. By the way, at Mavuno Church, we're not those people who are here to impress anybody. Isn't it? Why do I need to impress you? This is not about you. I'm here because my of my Father, my Heavenly Father. And so if this is you, I'm going to ask you to do a very bold thing. Something you didn't come here to do today. You didn't think you are coming here to do. But this is God's Word. And I just sense you are here. So don't even resist this call. If this is you, just raise your hand where you are. Bless the Lord. Your Father loves you, my friend. He does. He does. To God be the glory. Anybody else? Just put your hand. By the way, I just sense that the Lord is saying, yeah, this is a day, a new day for some people in this house. A spiritual new day. I didn't come here to pray this prayer, but God just put it on my heart that there are some people in this house who need to pray that prayer. If you're here, by the way, don't be embarrassed. Again, this is about you. Bless the Lord. Just put up wherever you are. Is there somebody at the back? Just put it up. Don't be thinking, maybe I'm too far. I'll come and see Pastor M privately. <laughs> the Bible says today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Now is a time of salvation. This is a time of his appointed calling upon your life. If you're here, just raise your hand wherever you are. I don't want to miss you out as I pray for this brother. Anybody else who say on that day, there you go, there you are. I told you, I knew it. Bless the Lord for you, my brothers. Bless the Lord. I'm going to ask you to just come to the front. Just come and stand over here. Anybody else who's in that place, just come and join them. I'm going to ask a couple of pastors to come and stand behind them. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that, Mabuno. Wow. Wow. I don't know why. The picture, the picture God gave me, as, and it was so funny, it's when you started playing that song that I just got the sense, my goodness, we're singing I'm a child of God, but there's some people who are not sure that you're a child of God. And I just, that's how the Holy Spirit works, huh? I don't know why in my spirit I just still sense there's somebody. <laughs> Before I just pray for these two. I'm just waiting for you. Where are you? Yeah. 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 Bless God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, come on, Mabuno. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. What are your names? Patrick and... Joseph and Emmanuel. Guys, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I bless the Lord for you. Yeah. Thank you for your courage. This is the most amazing thing you've ever done in your life. There are some things that will never be explained to you, like how you came to be here today on this day, that you would receive your father. But I can tell you, that something incredible is about to happen in your life. And you know, I was probably the age of one of, of you when I gave my life to Christ. Just like you, I probably wandered into a meeting, not, not planning. And then God just arrested me like that. But you know what? My life has never been the same. God made you for a plan and a perfect purpose. And as you just follow that purpose, trust me, you'll go so far. You'll go so far. You, he's on who made you. He, he knows why he made you. You're about to discover why he made you. This is the best discovery you've ever made. And so I want you just, just put your hands in front of yourself like this. Because this, this is a gesture of surrender. You know, when you surrender, you do this, isn't it? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You just say the words after me. And those words are just your commitment. And all of you, by the way, will say those words, isn't it? Yeah. Because we all believe in these words that we are committing ourselves to our Father. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I come to you. I come to you. I am a sinner who needs grace. I am a sinner who needs grace. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Forgive me for living a self-centered life. 
forgive me for living a self-centered life. From this day forward, this day forward, I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Come in, Lord. Come in, Lord. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. Take over my life. Take over my life. I choose to be your child. I choose to be your child. I call you father. I call you father. From this day forward. From this day forward. I will follow you. I will follow you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Yeah! Bless God. Bless God. Praise God. By the way, we're going to help you. We're going to walk with you. We're not leaving you behind. You're part of this family. Yeah? This is the beginning of an incredible journey. You will lead others people to Christ, by the way. I'm just prophesying over all of you. You will. Yeah? And in addition to that, you will become models for your community. Yeah? People around you, even in your family, will look at you as a model. I'm speaking that word over you. All of you. You will become... Are you the, what born are you in your family? First born. Maybe? Last born. Maybe? Forget. All of you will be first born in your family. Yeah. I'm calling that out of you. Your whole family will find its reference point. Even your siblings around you. And even your parents. And so I just release that blessing over you right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Please make sure, Soki, you cover those boys. Woo! Praise God. Amen. We just moved from 12 to 15. Yeah. God is so amazing. It's so amazing. It's so incredible. Bless you, Lord. Thank you so much. So here's, here's something I want to just... Um, what, what we'll do, we'll just, we'll just make a, I'll just make a couple of observations and then I'll make an announcement and then we'll have communion. That's it. It's a very simple afternoon, by the way. Some guys look disappointed, Allah. <laughs> After that, we can dance. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I think it's very easy to come from a mountain like this and then to go back, as somebody told us yesterday, to factory settings. It's very easy to have the energy we've had and then to lose it all in the next few days. In fact, let me do this. Let me call all of you who are in the back to come forward. Just come, come forward. Hey. Awesome, 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 awesome. Come, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Pastor Henry, come here, come here, come here. Quick means you, means you move fast. Awesome. You don't have to crowd, but just at least be in the front. Huh? So, so, so I said a few things to the pastors uh, when we met as campus pastors. And in a sense, it was just say, how do you confirm what has happened? How do you ensure that what you've experienced this week tarries? How do, you ex how do you ensure that you engage in it? And we say just a few simple things. Number one is we all need to commit ourselves to lead from the front. The reason you're here is because your campus pastor sees you as one of their key leaders. That's why you're here. You're not here because you're some person... <laughs> some Reja Reja person that they looked at and said, oh, I have, I have spaces I need to bring people. That's not why you're here. You're here because your campus pastor looked and they said, my goodness, I see in this person the future of this campus. That's why you're here. So as we, you need to understand it's a great honor that they, ex they wanted you here. It's actually because of how highly they esteem you. So because of that, there's some things you also have to start doing now. Because you know that, there's some things you have to start doing now. You have to lean forward in your leadership. I know some of you are shy. Some of you are introverted. Some of you don't like attention. Some of you like to sit at the back so that nobody sees you. But listen, you can never shrink your way to greatness. You can't. Mediocrity cannot be your portion if you're supposed to lead the fearless. Yeah? yeah? And so I just want to actually challenge you as I challenge the campus pastors. 
and to say, listen, from today forward, your posture in the church has to be different. Your posture in the church has to be different. And one of the things I want to see is to see people leading from the front. So what does that mean? It means you can't be a backbencher in your campus. You can't. Unless your campus pastor has specifically asked you to stand at the back <laughs> to run the sound desk. You can't stand at the back. Why? That's what mediocre people or newcomers do. You're not a newcomer. You're not a mediocre. It's not humility to stand at the back. It's foolishness because there's blessing. Yeah, it actually is. You're a child of the house. How do you let people come from the outside and come in front and get things in front of you? Yeah, how do you do that? So I think what we're trying to say is, guys, lean forward. Follow your leaders. Follow your leaders. And do it wholeheartedly. So lean forward. Uh, sit at the front. <laughs> uh, serve. Look for things. You know something? If something is going wrong, something is falling and you're at the back, how will you help? So, so be close enough to understand what's happening. Help out. Uh, we talked about prayer. And we've talked about the fact that the minimum prayer for a believer I don't think it, there's a verse in the scripture that says that but we're saying for this movement <laughs> is how much one hour. one hour one hour now I love the fact that Abmo told us it's not legalistic it's not that if you miss now you have to do two hours tomorrow it's not that kind of thing it's not that if you miss that now you walk around with your head down that's not what we're saying but we're saying this thing is not for the pastor it's for who it's for me do you want to see new levels of signs and wonders in your life? I know I do. So what we're saying is the minimum prayer for us is one hour. And, and I'm going to, I mean, the, the campus pastors will organize within their campuses and, and, and figure out how you guys do it. And we'll figure out even as a movement whether we're going to try and centralize that at any time. But for now, before another instruction comes, plan one hour. Before any other instruction comes, plan one hour. And because you understand that I don't pray at night, just understand, if any instruction is going to come, it will probably have to do with a morning hour. So if you want to start aligning yourself early, just start picking a morning hour. Wake up an hour earlier if you can. Just, I'm just helping you out here. Because if we start at some point now doing it together, it will not be in the night, you know. So just start, start, start preparing that. How many of you guys are believers today? Let me just see. Oh, I told you. Look at that. I told you. I love it. How does it feel, by the way, to have spent an hour in prayer? Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And by the way, it doesn't, even if you never saw breakthroughs today, just the fact that you know you spent time with your father, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. And we'll continue growing in our relationship as we spend time. So spend time in prayer. Then the other thing we talked about is evangelism. And we said, listen, this evangelism thing is incredible. By the way, it's so amazing. Just taking every opportunity to share what you have. None of us is experts. Well, maybe there are a few who feel they're experts. But most of us are that place where we're just regular people. But I think one of the things that I had, was it Pastor James who said, I can't remember who shared a testimony, that yesterday as they left the gate and people were walking home, they saw some people who had come from this meeting stopping someone to talk to them. I was like, yes! That's awesome! They get it! This is our lifestyle. So I want to challenge us every campus would actually organize a day when we do some evangelism. And that evangelism could be as simple as what we did. Just go to the campus next door, go to the mall next door, go somewhere, and just pray for people. It could be as simple as that. Let's just pray for people and see what needs people have and see what the Lord leads us to pray. And maybe we'll lead some people to Christ and take some numbers. Uh, but if we can just commit ourselves as campuses at least once a week. Now, I'm not saying once a week only. That's the minimum. Just like I said, prayer is not, I'm not mandating one hour. I'm saying one hour is minimum. If you want to pray five hours, hallelujah. We said three hours you makes you a pastor. Five hours makes you a bishop. <laughs> Seven hours makes you apostle. <laughs> so... So prayer and evangelism. If we could just maintain that coming out from here, I believe we're going to see some incredible things between now and, and December. So the other thing I challenged, uh, and of course with that, when we take those numbers, we visit those people. We want to visit those people. Another thing about it is I want to challenge you guys. 
and to say, listen, as the leaders of this church, you must be generous. First of all, forget generosity. You must be a tither. Do you realize tithing has nothing to do with generosity? Yeah, a tithe is your requirement as a, path, as a part of this covenant. It is how you actually symbolize. This is, in the Old Testament, that was a way of saying, this is my covenant. I'm connected to this covenant. It's the way you, when you, when you, when you, live, in the, when you live in Uganda, there's something you do, you pay tax. And that is your sign <laughs> that I'm part of this country. I'm, I contribute. I am a member of this kingdom or this, of this country. And it's the same way with the kingdom. Jesus never said, or the Bible never said, God loves a cheerful tither. Have you ever read of us like that? It's just the same way that K KRA, there's no law that says, please smile as you pay your tax. They feel nothing. All they want you to do is do what? Pay your tax. So with tax, with, with, there's no verse about being cheerful. As you tithe, you do it because that's who you are. You're a child of God. Now, in terms of generosity, hallelujah. Now when you're giving generosity after your tithe, smile. Be cheerful because that, one, that doesn't work if you're not cheerful. You need to be a cheerful giver. There are blessings for that as well. But I want to just challenge you, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you do, as the leaders, we have to lead the way by being titles. And I want to just challenge you, check on each other as you do discipleship. As leadership communities, maybe you guys need to, in Supathati, ask each other, have you tithed? Yeah. I don't think you're being intrusive. I think that's called accountability, isn't it? Hill City staff team, Pastor Njaro, please ask your people. Because why are you working here if you're not tithing here? What are you doing here? You cannot be leading God's people if you're not leading through generosity. And I believe, by the way, as we start to lead that way and as we disciple people to do that, we're going to start to see a prosperity we've never experienced at Mavuno Church. Yeah. There's something that's going to start happening in this church that will be astounding. And I'm not even, I don't need to be a prophet to say that, by the way. Watch this space. So those are three things. Number one was what? Prayer. Number two? Number three? Generosity. Now, and evangelism and visitation go together there for me. So, so, so combine them there. What is the other thing we say? I think we're... There's going to be teaching from the front. And I say, to the, I say to, the, to the campus pastors, I, as your pastor, I am committing myself to study God's word. I'm committing myself to be in study and to be in God's word. And what I'm going to do is I am going to share God's word with my executive team. I will teach them. And they have committed that they will teach their campus pastors and the people around them. And the campus pastors have committed themselves that as the teaching comes, they will pass it on to you. And what we will expect you to do is as that teaching comes, you will pass it on to the people you're discipling. And what we're saying is there will be teaching that will be coming. It's not to say, you know, when you read the Bible, you will see other things that are not being taught by your pastor. Yeah, read. I'm not saying we become a church that waits for the pastor to teach us. You have to read the scripture for yourself. But there will be teaching coming your way. And when that teaching comes, receive that word. Because that is God's word for the house that day. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. So we're going to be a teaching church. I mean, we've said that this, what, what Apostle Mo, we're not, by the way, we're not just saying this because, oh, it's worked for worship harvest. So we want, no, no, no. What we're saying is we came to a conclusion that we need new values to become a movement. That the values we had before were great for our church. But if we want to become a growing, multiplying movement, we need other values. So we just went to movements where it's working. And we said, what are the values that have helped you? And as they shared them, they resonate with our spirit. It's the same thing I sense. I, I, I completely agree with those things that have been shared with us, that they are useful. So those are the things that we're saying. And I know many of you are already discipling, and I bless God for the fact that you're doing so. But now we're saying, as you disciple, there will be instructions coming along that we want you to share. By the way, there's nobody I disciple who will not tithe. I've told my exec, if you're not tithing, just leave. <laughs> because you're my disciple. You know, I'm going to teach you how to do it. If you're, if you're struggling with your finances, I want to help you with that as well. But the whole idea is, you cannot be in disobedience, and you're part of my house. You're going to call cursing on my... <laughs> you know what happens? The Bible says a curse called a devourer. I don't want devourers in my house. So I want to make sure my household is people who are aligned. So those are some of the things we said. And what we said is as we do these things, our hope is you're not going to hear me teach about discipleship between now and December. Why? Because these things are more caught than taught. What I want is by the time we start a series in January next year, 
And by the way, I'm sure it will be about discipleship. You already know what our theme for next year will be. It will be about following. By the time we do that series, I want your churches to already know it because they've seen it. Does that make sense? By the time we're doing the January series next year, I want people to already be like, oh, that's what, that's what she was doing. <laughs> it's so clear because someone has been demonstrating following for me all this time. Whatever we, by next year, by the time we're talking about any pef, whatever it is, we'll be calling it. <laughs> Your people will be like, I've seen, my, I've seen my leader doing that. I've seen this congregation members. I've felt that in the church already. It wouldn't be something strange. And guess what? They'll have seen you sitting in the front. They'll have seen you saying amen when your pastor preaches. By the way, some of you, I know you grew up in Anglican church where nobody said amen. But let me tell you what happened. Did you, did you hear Pastor Mishu when he came to the front? And then he said amen, and then two people said amen, and then he said, I, I promise I'll always say amen after this. Because he just realized how, how cold people can look when you're talking from the front, and how it's so good to have an encouraging group that believes in you. Yeah? Yeah. It's true. It's true. By the way, your pastor isn't Superman. Even me as pastor, I come here and I'm like, hey. Sometimes I feel, Maze, it's easier to preach in Worship Harvest than Mavuno Church. Because those guys seem like they really want to hear what I have to say. Yeah? Yeah, yeah by the way, you can hear, they're already calling me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it may seem unnatural for you, but guess what happens? When you become a leader, you'll understand why it's important. When you stand in front and you try to lead people and they look at you with cold eyes, you'll realize, oh my God. You know, to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower first. Yeah? So, so yeah. So when Pastor, when Pastor Milton is preaching, I want to hear some, come on, Pastor Milton! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> I want to hear it from his people, you know. Because these are the people God has called to follow him, isn't it? And by the way, if, if you guys get it, by the time he's preaching about followership, everybody in the church will already be following. Yeah, because the core team in the church already began following a long time ago. So I think I want to just challenge you guys, lean forward. Uh, honor, on, honor him. He's a good man. Yeah, don't, don't watch Pastor Milton coming out of his car with his suitcase, his briefcase. He's, he's coming to preach the word for you. He's studied the whole night. Yeah. <laughs> But don't miss this point. He's, he's been, he's been in, in intercession for you the whole night. He's coming to church. He's, he's maybe been, had a spiritual attack. This morning he had a spiritual attack coming here. His car was hit by a truck. Yeah? I mean, this is, this is your pastor. And then he comes in and he's carrying all these things. He's rushing so that he can feed you. And you're just sitting down watching him run to the front. How do you do that? So serve. Serve your leaders. Honor them. Yeah, see, Pastor Vivian, just tell her, let me help you carry your bag. It's just a way to model to the rest of your congregation that we honor our leaders. Amen? And as I talk about Pastor Milton, you know your leaders. So honor your leaders. Model honor. Some of us come from very dishonoring cultures. So how do we change it? We start doing it. And as we do it, we'll see our churches change. Amen. So I think this, these, are, these are some of the things we talked about with the campus pastors. And we said, we want to be the church that is different. But you haven't even had a come on, Pastor M, since I said about encouraging. Yeah, let's be that church, guys. Yeah, let's be that church. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell, tell you what, by the way, you'll do it until it becomes natural. Yeah, it will become natural, by the way. You know, when Pastor, when Pastor Kilon decided doing come on, I used to find it so hard to do. Nowadays, I'm the guy who's like, come on, Pastor. I'm that guy. And by the way, I love doing it because I can see how it makes the person teaching me joyful. Yeah, it encourages them. So do it. <laughs> and, and for me, it's not even about being weird. It's about just letting people, the joy of the Lord, by the way, as I'm being taught and I'm appreciating what I'm being taught, I'm like, do you know how Apostle Mo has changed this church? Do you know? Like, do you know that our future is different because the man came here? Yes. Yeah. So, so... It's true. It's so, so true. Yeah. So, 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 so here is what he taught us. Here is what he taught us. Because some of you need to get this revelation. Huh? Here is what Apostle Mo taught us. Because we've been hanging out with the past as the pastors with him. He said that one day, somebody. 
<laughs> Some, somebody came somebody came to okay 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 so somebody came to church a young man and said hi daddy and Apmo said I have a name call me my name you know like why are you calling me daddy don't you know my name and then the young person I don't know how he allowed him to speak but he allowed him to speak and the young person said it's your it's our job to lift you up it's your job to humble yourself yeah? I was so struck I was so struck by that revelation you know why because what he said in many churches it's the opposite that it's our job to pull you down and guess what then the pastor has to prove themselves you guys don't know I'm anointed you guys don't know that I have God's power. So guess what happens when I start feeling like I'm being pushed by my congregation? Now I have to prove to yourself to you guys that I'm anointed. So guess what I start doing? I start using church money to buy myself a better car just to impress you guys. I start doing things that are not real. Cuz I really want to, you know, cuz I cuz I'm trying to connect with you and I can feel I'm being pushed down. So guess what happens? When there's dishonor, everybody just goes down. But what he was teaching us is when I start to elevate my leader, that's my job. Now the job of the leader is to say, "Uh uh, me I'm down here." It is me not it's my job to actually humble myself. Because the Bible says when I humble myself before the Lord, he will lift me up. So don't don't say, "Oh, if I if I if I honor my leader, they'll become proud." Who are you to decide that, that for them? That's not your job. You're not doing your job. You 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 bless your leader. Let them deal with their God and if they're a good leader they need to understand it's my job to be humble it's my job to make sure that this thing never ruins <laughs> i never allow myself to take glory that belongs to god so i think it's important for us to make sure that we have that distinction so i want to see pastor that pastor that is such a good father yeah. Yeah, he is he is <laughs> he's a good father But listen, but listen, as much as he's such a good father, there are people around him who will miss the blessing. Yeah? Because they don't understand how to honor their father. And some people will come from the outside and they'll come right to the center and they live in his house <laughs> and they will end up becoming his sons. And people who've been around him for years will be left in the cold, not because he's discriminating, but because they understand how to call out a father. So I think what I want to challenge you, some of you have had a spirit of orphanhood. Yeah? But remember we're taught by Apmo that orphanhood is the business of the devil. God is in the business of fatherhood. And remember, because we call out fathers, it is you now to go to your father and say, hey, you are my father. How can I serve you? How can I be in your life? Pastor Njoro is a great father. Yeah. He is. <laughs> Hey, leave my pastor alone. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> leave my pastor alone, you guys. <laughs> I ne he needs protection from his people. <laughs> I didn't see his bodyguards protecting him. What's up with what's up with that? <laughs> There's a, there's a spiritual illustration there. He's being wrestled down and his people are just like, oh, oh. I need some Hill City guys saying, hey, you don't touch a man like that, man. <laughs> Pastor James, I see you. <laughs> but guys, I, I'm just saying, listen, the work of ministry is hard. It is hard. And it's interesting because when I've talked to my pastors, many of them have wounds. They have been told things by their people. They have been injured by congregation members. They've poured into their leaders and they've poured into people and the people have just walked out on them. They have been called names. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's a type, my wife can tell you, Pastor Carol can tell you. I'd tell people, to be in my position, you have to have a thick skin. If you think you've ever faced criticism, just understand, you don't even know half the things I've faced. You don't. And you know something? I would absorb those things on behalf of the movement. Many people have said many things to me that I'd never even repeat to you. Sometimes not even to her. And I just say, that's my portion. <laughs> Somehow when you're the visible one, you're the one who takes the shots, isn't it? So your pastor already has enough wounds for you to st start being the one adding to them. 
And the, the Lord actually revealed me this to me when I was serving Pastor Oscar. I was that independent thinker. I was a guy when Pastor Oscar would say, I think we should do this, I'd be like, but there are 10 other ways to do it. I was a bright kid, by the way. I can think of th- at least three other ways I can tell you, you know. And then one day, his wife revealed to me, Pastor B, many years later, she told me that they spent a lot of time praying about me. Like he would come home and just frustrated and like, what, what's up, hon? It's Moreri again. Imagine your pastor should be praying about demons. And it's you he's praying about. I mean, imagine that. I mean, imagine you're taking away attention from demons to yourself because you're so hard to lead. So I think I think I, I hear you, I think you hear what I'm saying, huh? Don't let your pastor's job to be to worry about you. You be the one who lifts them up. I, when other people are attacking them, at least let them know, I believe in you, Pastor. Yeah. I believe in you. And, 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 Apostle, and Apostle Mo said something very radical to us as campus pastors. I'll say it to you guys. Some of you, you need to get into the habit of blessing your pastors. Yes. You do. You need to get into the habit of blessing your pastors. And I don't mean saying, I bless you. <laughs> These are the people who bring God's word to you. They love on you. They, I, I pray would become that movement where I'm like, by the way, let me tell you something. Me, I've preached to people who've become millionaires under my teaching. Last scene heading. Last scene heading. They've never come back to say, Pastor, and I know because I even helped them intervene in situations. They've never even come back to say thank you. Yeah. In fact, some of them come to me when they have a prayer need, even today, as millionaires. Like, Pastor, Pasi, I've got some problems in my business. I'm like, I remember even bailing you out the last time you were in trouble, five years ago. You thrived. Now you're coming, you're coming back when you have need. It's like they see me as an ATM or as a tap. I'm like, serious, it's so transactional. And I'm like, I've taught you, I've taught your children, I've blessed you. And the, the only thing you can think about me is when you have problems. Yeah? But I also tell you there's some very honorable people in Mavuna. There are very honorable people in this church. Yeah? There are people I know who have blessed. And guess what happens? As you bless, I really believe, as, Pastor, as Apostle Mukisa told us, you're tapping into something. I really believe it. And by the way, I never knew any of this. This was very far from my thinking. Even theologically, this was very uncomfortable for me until I began to practice it until I began to practice it. And then I began to see God do some incredible things that I had no explanation for. God began to bring me favor I had no explanation for. So yeah, as you pray, the Bible says, honor your parents with your, su-, and we were taught how to honor with our substance. Honor your pastor as you pray. And by the way, it starts with prayer for them, isn't it? Pray for them, but also honor them when you have an opportunity and trust God to bless them because when they are blessed, you're blessed as well. So, so these are things, I believe, by the way, as we practice these things, watch what happens in this movement by December. Watch what happens. Six months. Yeah? The next six months. This, <laughs> by the way, in fact, tell, look at your neighbor, tell them, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> yeah. there, there's some upper room moments, there's some upper room moments where it's good to be part of them. Because you're there, you catch the anointing early. Other people will be asking you, how was it when it started? And you say, we were right there. You guys are actually there at the foundation of Mavuno Church. Yeah, sure. like, like, there was a foundation earlier, but in this new wing, this new thing the Holy Spirit is doing, the foundation is here. This retreat is a foundation, and you're there. And so I just want to encourage you. Guys, God is going to do some incredible things. And by the way, some of you, I can see you as apostles in other countries. You will go and plant churches. You cannot, you will not even recognize yourself what God is going to do through you. And, and again, by the way, seriously, just look at your neighbor. They don't look like an apostle, do they? They may not look very apostolic. But watch this space. Watch this space. Watch this space. See what God is going to do. I think, um, so when we have communion, let me just uh, explain. The realization that we had with the exec team 
as we went through all our crying and tears, we finally got to a place where we're like, this is about a decision. We need to make a commitment. We need to actually, because that's what Jesus did through communion. He, he, I mean, that's what he wants us to remember. He made a commitment. And his commitment wasn't when you guys, he was just like, I have committed, I'm dying for you. The Bible says, while we were yet, sinners. It wasn't like, have you decided, give me, give me a response and then I'll choose whether to die for you. It was like, I've done it. His death was irreversible. It was, rever- it was irreversible even before he knew your response. So he committed. And then he said, now that you've committed back to me, do this in remembrance. It's a covenant. You're remembering a commitment, a deep commitment, which a, co- a covenant is like a marriage. You remember, it's like when, 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 when you covenant, it's like you're remembering. This is what this is about. Now, we realized as we were, we were, we were hanging out with our team, that when we, when we had communion, you know, we often think of me covenanting with Jesus. But we didn't actually we realize, why didn't he say then, have it alone? This thing is when you gather. And why? Because a covenant is not just with your father, it's with one another. And so what we're going to be doing as Mavuno, when you have communion, we're going to be inviting you as you have communion to make covenant or to renew covenant. And what you're saying is, this is my family. This is my vision. This is a place God has planted me. This is my God family. That's what you're saying as you do this. And also, for some of you, this is going to be your recommitment to follow. It's going to be your like, you know what? I am here. I've had one foot outside the door for a long time, but I am here. This is where God has planted me and I will thrive and this is my family. So that's what you're going to be doing. And that's what we're going to be doing as well as pastors. But with Worship Harvest, what we're saying is, we want to covenant to be your covenant brothers and sisters. Um, we, do. uh, we don't actually believe that the relationship God gave us is a convenient relationship. We don't believe it's a relationship for now. We actually believe that you're, you're, we call you our relatives. We actually believe you're our relatives. And that is something... We don't even think we have a choice in this. We actually believe the Lord put our paths together. And so as we share communion, for us, we are renewing ourselves in that, re- in that, in that covenant and that relationship, saying we recognize the anointing, the apostolic anointing in your church. We give God glory because we understand anointing. We see it and we recognize it. We affirm it. We recognize that you are a great church. We recognize that God is going to use you greatly to bless many. We also recognize that you have something, there's an anointing in you that we are tapping into and that we want to keep tapping into. We thank God that the revival began with you because I was telling Apmo, if it had tied with us, we'd have made all the mistakes, then we'd be telling them this is what not to do. But now they've made the mistakes so we can be freed from the mistakes, we sort of can accelerate. I mean, Apmo took a long time to read this stuff. I just needed to talk to him. That's an art of following, isn't it? Yeah, I just needed to talk to him, and all the things that would have taken me so long to figure out, I was like, oh, you figured it out. Tell me. And he told me. And the beauty about this man, he hasn't hidden anything. He was like, what do you want to know? This, you want how we do this in church? Here. Is it an app you want? This is what we use. And he's so bold as to, he and Ari have been bold enough to ask us, why do you do this? You're limiting your church. <laughs> it's good to have friends who can tell you that. Huh? You all need friends who tell you your breath stinks, you know? because uh, sometimes your friends are very nice to you. And the Bible says wounds from a friend can be trusted. And we really believe those are those friends for us. So what we want to do, guys, is we want to serve you communion and we want you to serve us communion because we believe that this is a commitment and a relationship we have as families. You know? Just open that. One better. Um, Jesus on the night he was betrayed as you know this he took bread and he broke it and he said this bread is my body which is broken for you and he says you eat it every time that you gather this is what he said to us isn't it he also took the wine, the wine on the same night he was betrayed and he said this is a cup of my new covenant and you know every time that we eat it and we drink it we are proclaiming his death until he returns What's his death? It is his commitment to us. It is a covenant. We're just saying, Lord, I am part of it. Father, I'm calling you out. Jesus, this is my covenant. That's what we're saying. I'm part of this thing. And so, yeah, Lord, we just thank you for covenant. 
We thank you because you're a God of covenant. You don't operate on contract, you operate on covenant. And Lord, we are children of covenant. And so as we share this, Lord, <laughs> we thank you for Psalm 133 that says how beautiful it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. It is just like the oil of blessing flows. And so, Lord, in our unity, in the unity of the church, where two churches can come together without competition, willing to share and be a blessing to one another, where these guys have been such a blessing to us, Lord, we pray that you would receive all the glory. And we pray that, Lord, you would bless them immeasurably for, this, for the blessing they have been to us. And Lord, even as we share this, we want to do it publicly just to symbolize that we are committed to these guys and we love them with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What we're going to do, I guess you're going to figure out how to do this, but exec team, could you just bless your brothers and sisters? And, just and maybe we can have a few more of those just brought up. Maybe you, you go around and sanitize their hands. We'll figure out how to do this. Somebody else come and grab the red come. Mavuno pastors, can you just stand behind them and just lay a hand on them and speak blessing over them even as we're doing this? Just, just pronounce. Come on, just speak it out aloud. Just speak a blessing over them. Yeah, come on, just do it. We love you guys. We really love you guys. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Please eat and drink. ask if the worship harvest team would stand behind these Mavuno pastors and serve them also. Or rather, just serve them. I don't know how you'll do it. And where's the sanitizer? Somebody can sanitize them. Oh, you, you've sanitized already? Okay, all right, all right. stand behind them and just speak blessing over them. Yeah, we receive the blessing. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Pastors, you can also eat. exec if you just come to your feet and with your masks on if you could just hug let's just hug our brothers and sisters we love these guys we love them so much let me invite our compass pastors to come to the front compass pastors if you just come here Campus pastors, stand next to your significant other if they're here. Okay, when you're done with the hugs, I need help serving communion. <laughs> Okay, we love you guys. Woo! Woo! Pastor Njero, I think you have a testimony to share with us. Where is Riga's? Where is the mic, Riga? Come, my brother. We have been praying for this man. Yay! 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 Bishop Albo. He just made a decision to become a Christ follower. Come on! Come on, Ashley, come on, Ashley, come on, Ashley, come on, Ashley. Hey! Tell your neighbor we are not praying for revival. Revival is happening. Revival is happening. We are not praying for revival. Revival is happening. Hallelujah! Woo. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, God is good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wow, wow, wow. I love this man. He's my son in the Lord. I love him. 
and I love his family. I love his wife, who is my executive pastor. I love his daughter, who is my pastor, church planter. Yeah, and uh, Albu, you've made the best decision you could ever make. Yeah. I just want to say to you, it was interesting because Carol's dad gave his life to Christ, almost the last one in the family, huh? but he became the spiritual head of that home. Yeah. And not only of his home, he became our spiritual father, he became a spiritual head for all of us. And I really believe God is going to accelerate you so fast. Just because you've humbled yourself to say, yes to Jesus. Yeah. And even your family, I know there are prayers you've prayed for your kids, for Ryan, for Ashley, you're going to see those prayers come to pass. Yeah, you will. And simply because the man of the house is covering his house spiritually. And so I just want to say I'm proud of you. I love you. I will pray for you. We will pray for you. And we will walk with you as well. Yeah. We love you, man. Hey, for tears. Yeah, 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 sorry. If you see us losing it, just know that we have prayed for this man. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. By the way, we're losing the plot. We're supposed to be serving communion. <laughs> let, me, let me just... Uh... So, so, I think uh, what I'm going to do, we may not all get a, a thingy, but what I'll ask for exec team is if... Uh, could I get Kilonzi's? If you and Faith could grab that, just do that together. And stand at the back, no? And then Ondachi's, if you could get this. You go together, no, you just go together. There's not enough for all of you. And if you and Noel could go with that, the two of you. There isn't, we are many, and there are many pastors. All right. Ah. All right, if there's Pastor Milton, you guys can go and grab. Oh, okay, it's okay. Are you sent, huh? But you and Vivian need to go and grab one because we're going to be many. So what I want you to do, exec pastors, just stand in position first because you, 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 so Pastor James, come and stand next to, uh, yeah, so I need somebody with, uh, yeah, ex exactly. Pastor Milton, you guys grab just the cup, the wine, yeah, and come and stand between there. And then who's another couple? Uh, Kilonzis, just come, come over here. And then the, the Godwin, Godwin, where are you guys? Come, come this other side. You're very far. Okay. Uh, and then are there more? Okay. So I'm going to ask uh, just for our adopted staff team. Pastor Albu, come and do your first job. Yeah. You guys go down. Go, go with her. Yeah, go with her. <laughs> come, come over here between them. Yeah. Pastor Godwin, just go, go, go to the edge. Godwin, go to the edge. Yeah, stay there. And then, Kilonzi, if you could just come. Yeah. Sp spread out. Spread out, uh, Sheila and Albu. Go, go back that way. I just want to make sure there's space. I don't want us crowding, huh? Okay. Sheila, just follow, follow your husband now, huh? Seriously. <laughs> uh, Faith. Faith. Apo, Apo. All right. Pastor Joro there. All right. So what I want you to do is campus pastors. Uh, could I, could I get, okay, so here's what I'm going to do with my Worship Harvest uh, team. I want you to wash our hands, uh, which I guess Jesus washed feet, so you guys can wash hands. So I'm going to ask you as couples to just stand next to a Mavuno couple and grab sanitizer. Um, and I, I want to make sure we have enough sanitizer so every couple has somebody next to them. We're trying to figure out how to do this in a sanitary way. Pastor Mose and Ari, just stay up. You'll, you'll pray for us. All right, so just have a cup. Yeah, Steve and, St Steve and Florence there. Uh, okay, excellent. Just stand next. Yeah, stand next. 
Uh, we, do you have enough? Okay. Uh, B3, you, you come this way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that you're, you're, you're serving in between. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have um, the Mavuno pastors. Doc, you can grab that sanitizer. Yeah. We'll have the, we'll have the Mavuno pastors come up, campus pastors. Just go to the exec closest to you. Uh, get sanitized. And then just take communion. Uh, and what I'm going to ask for you who are serving communion, uh, if you've got the bread, just say to everybody who takes it, the body of Christ that was broken for you. That's all. And for those of you who have the cup, say the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, and so as you receive it, just come with your spouse, receive it, eat it, and then go to the back after you're done. And then when they're done, then the congregation, the rest of the team, the rest of the, the pastors will come and receive service. So let's go. Let's just serve. So start with bread and then get the wine.
guys had communion? Just go, 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 go. Go on to heaven. Donuts can represent. about signs and wonders. I think we've entered the realm of signs and wonders, huh? Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, wow. I guess as we stand here, um, for me, it's just to say, guys, we love you. This, this is a new season. This is a new season. It's a season of power, a season of signs and wonders, a, sign of, a season of growth, an end of limitations. God is going to do some great things. He's going to do some great things. Pastor, Apostle Mo, I think we just want to say, and Apostle Mo, you know you have meddling rights in my life and in Mavuno's life. Yeah, in Mavuno's life. So I think what we're saying to you and the Worship Harvest team, you were here at the beginning. Uh, keep praying for us. Yeah. yeah, and keep uh, speaking into what God is doing. Amen. And you're part of our story. You're already part of our story, but now when the story is, is written, you will be in that part, you will be right in the middle of it. And we're so grateful for you guys. We're so grateful for you guys. So we want to just conclude, huh? Uh, we want to conclude because, yeah, the mountaintop is great for the view but fruit is grown in the valleys yeah so so yeah we could stay here and worship forever but we need to go back and do ministry and i want to i'm going to ask up more to just speak the final blessing over us but i wanted to ask pastor carol do you have a word or anything you want to say yeah a mother's blessing i think this is a new beginning i think as we walk out of here we're saying we are walking uh, not with our history. We are not walking with our ambition. We are not walking with the things that Pastor Njaro talked to us about. We are leaving them right here. We are walking into a future filled with God's power, God's miracles, God's signs. 
Because the word of God says that these are the things that are going to accompany, not Apostle Mo, but are going to accompany each of us Amen. as we take our place as God's children, being faithful to the things that we have learned from this place. Amen. 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 <laughs> Whoa! Hey! 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 Oh, thanks, Pastor Mills. Wow. Amen. Amen. It's a new season. It's a new season. The blessing, the blessing. Remember when God blessed, first of all, he blessed creation. That's yeah. Right. Genesis 1. Is that 12? What did he say? And says, and God blessed them, saying, yeah. be fruitful, fruitful. Multiply, multiply, and feed. Yeah. And in verse 18, God blesses Adam and Eve. And the Bible says, and he said to them, mm. he said to them. In verse 12, it just says, he blessed them saying, because we were speaking to creation. And in this case, creation is the resources. Wow. It's the resources. Because Adam and Eve were going to need a multiplied number of cows, wheat, and whatever it is. Yeah. But the true blessing, yes, the resources are a blessing, but they are not the supreme blessing. The supreme blessing, thank you. The Bible says, God blessed them, Genesis 1, 18, and said to them, to who? Adam and Eve. What did he say? Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. I've been teaching, and then it says, and have dominion over the other, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the. In other words, have dominion over the other things that have already blessed, which are multiplying. I've blessed the resources they are multiplying. Now, I need you to have dominion over them. And how are you going to do it? By you multiplying. I've been teaching this team and this church that the true blessing, you see people come and say, the Lord blessed me with a new car. The Lord blessed me with a new house. That's wonderful. But you're not yet really blessed. Hmm. The true blessing is to have fruitful fruitfulness, multiplication, and subduing the earth, is to have disciples. Wow. It's to have disciples, sons and daughters at three stages. Level one is fruitfulness. They are there. Level two, they are multiplied. Level three, they are filling the earth. Oh, come on. <laughs> Amen. Wow. I love that. Are you understanding? Yeah. In Genesis 28, Isaac blessed his son Jacob and said, may God bless you. And this is what he said. May he make you fruitful. Mm. May he multiply you. And may he make you a great assembly of peoples. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, that's the blessing we are praying right now. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 So, Father, thank you for we are your children. You have blessed us. Thank you for the people gathered here from everywhere. And even those who are still with us online and other places. In this great movement that you have called. That you started. This is your work. This is not our work. This is your work. Mm -hmm. And you have blessed this work. At one point there were but a few people. But you have increased them. You've multiplied them. Yeah. You're sending them to the nations. Yeah. And Father, we're excited because now acceleration comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so friends, may God bless you. Mm. 
may he make you fruitful. Yeah. May you have many sons and oh, daughters. Yes. May you have disciples. Amen. May you have people who say, I am becoming more like Christ because of that man, because of that woman. Amen. May he multiply you. May your disciples produce disciples. Amen. And may you fill the earth. May your disciples so multiply yeah. that you will go to different cities of this world and you'll find them there. Amen. May God bless you. May God bless you. Wow. May God bless you. Amen. May a little one become a thousand. Hallelujah. A small one, a strong nation. Amen. May this mountain of the Lord's house be established Amen. on top of all the mountains Amen. and be exalted above the hills. And may all nations flow to it. Amen. We thank you, Father, for Mavuno, this movement and this church shall be found in multiple, multiple nations yeah, yeah. on several continents. Amen. For you have spoken it Amen. Amen. and you it, shall Lord. perform it. Yes. And we praise you and glorify you yes, and say you are great, you are yes. great, you are yes. great and awesome yes. God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this retreat. Yes. Thank you for the salvations. Yes. Thank you for the healings. Yes. Thank you for the miracles. Lord. Thank you for the multiplication. Thank you. Thank you that beginning now, there is ease in ministry. Yes. Ease Lord. in ministry. Yes. Words shall produce results. Yes. No more shall there be debates. No more shall there be wonderings. But we will only see the glory of the Lord cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Whoa! Whoa! Bless the Lord. All right, here's what we're going to do. At the count of three, I want us to give the mightiest war cry, shout of praise that this area has ever had, that every demon will be put on notice. Even the demons that are blinding people in the neighborhood next door will be put on notice that the revival has begun. Are you ready, people? Are you ready? One, two, three! Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with you now and forevermore. And those people say.